Now we consider the other question. What if my series was smaller than your series and yours is finite? Consider this one. What's going on here? We can say that this number has n squared, this one has n squared, and then some. It has already as much as this one, but then it adds more stuff. It adds pi and square root of n, so this one must be bigger. That means that when you flip, the, when you flip them, well, this, since the denominator is bigger, the quotient is smaller. In other words, when you flip these, you flip the way the inequality points. Slap some sums on both sides. That shows you that this sum must be less than or equal to that one. But we've already established that this one is finite. You can use the integral test, for example. This is a p-series where p is bigger than 1. This is finite, and this is obviously positive. Um, the reason it's positive is because all the denominators are positive. This traps this one into something that's uh, less than or equal to something finite and bigger than 0. And of course, all these are positive, so the sequence of partial sums is monotone and bounded above. That forces it to converge. And so we say that, that was a famous theorem, if a sequence is bounded and monotone, um, monotone increase in the bounded above forces it to converge. Therefore, this one less, less than or equal to some finite number, and it's positive, and then we're done. We say that uh, this one converges by direct comparison test. That's it. You just, these are super easy. You just have to compare them with something that you know. And then you'd be happy just determining whether it converges or diverges. Alright, we'll see you here next time. Bye.